Welcome to the special program. As the war on Gaza continues to escalate, the President of the Islamic Republic of Iran, Ibrahim Raisi, talks to Al Jazeera. President Ibrahim Raisi, thank you for talking to Al Jazeera. At the outset, straight to the war on Gaza, as it nears almost an entire month, and as the President of the Islamic Republic of Iran, how do you interpret what is taking place in Gaza at all levels? In the name of Allah Almighty, at the very beginning, I'd like to salute all the viewers and wishing them success. The news in our region is not good enough and it hurts anyone, whatever his religion is, anyone with conscience. What we see in the region must be a trigger to everyone who have thought and uh, who has opinion. Killing of women and children are supported by the United States and some European countries. We can say that the world, peoples in the world and uh, are in one side and the US administration and some other European countries with the Zionist regime is on another side. Concentration on this matter is quite important in order to know why this Zionist regime is committing the massacres against the Palestinian people. The ones who live in their homes on their land, those who resist and they are still resilient and they are ready to die for the cause to be martyrs. The Zionist regime is not fair against, against the Palestinians for 75 years or more. The Zionist regime killed a lot of Palestinians, put them in prison, tortured them, and took and confiscated the land and the houses. The Palestinian cause shows the unfairness imposed by the Zionist regime on the Palestinian people and the peoples of the region. Does the Zionist regime succeed to lead the Palestinians to surrender? No. What happened during the Al-Aqsa flood is the result of year of torture and unfairness. They resist and they f defend Al-Aqsa Mosque. They were put in prison. Every day we have a martyr or martyrs and every day a house is demolished and the result this anger and rage will turn into a resistance movement and Al-Aqsa flood. The Zionist regime is fake and against humanity. The United States of America that claims commitment to the human rights cannot justify this torture, this unfairness, cannot justify they are providing the Zionist regime with weapons. We can understand from the resilience of the Palestinian people is that they are uh, resistant and they are strong at the same time. The Palestinian people, as described today, is a people who is capable and able, but they are not treating fairly. And the resistance and the Palestinian people will succeed. Such a resistance, such a will, will lead undoubtedly to the victory. War today is the war of wills. There is the will of the people, the will who is treat, being treated unfairly under the unfairness of Israel and the United States. And there are the will of the uh, settlers and the will of unfairness in, represented in Israel, America, and some other European countries. In this war, there is no doubt that the iron will of the Palestinians will win and the future will be for Palestine and the Palestinians. Israel considers Iran as a partner with Hamas and the resistance from a historical perspective. Do you consider yourself, I mean Iran, a partner with the Palestinian resistance, namely with the events on October 7th, known as the Al-Aqsa Storm operation? The forces of the resistance are from inside the Palestinian people, from inside Lebanon or any other place in the region. They are youth and people who are get fed and sick of the unfairness. The resistance in Palestine 
is a group of people from within the Palestinian people. They are aware enough, they are aware of the situation, and they want to defend their people and their land. The defense is legitimate, and we support uh, such a legitimate defense. They defend their people, their land, and their rights. We have stressed so many times that we support the Palestinian resistance because they are trying to restore the rights of the Palestinians. If the resistance forces in Gaza are supported by Iran, yes, this has been confirmed so many times from our side. And Imam Ali said, every unfair is torture. And the unfairness and the torture will come to an end, end of the day. This unfairness will go away, and what will stay is the right. They cannot ignore forever the right of the Palestinian people. Iran is a defender of the Palestinian resistance against the torture and the unfairness people. But if you mean if the resistance in any place remove is this due to a command or an order from the Iran? They are free to take their decisions and to do their things, and the answer is no. The resistance adopt the decisions that suit them, and they are, they are doing their decisions, making their decisions, executing their decisions according to their benefit and according to their understanding, and then it's up to them. As announced all over the place, the resistance in Palestine, the resistance in other places in the region are supported by us. We support them, but the decisions are theirs and the action is there. This will be the situation today and in the future. Iran, represented by its foreign minister, initiated its active diplomacy, making efforts at a broader level with the Arab countries and the Muslim states, with the aim of a unified regional position, calling for a ceasefire, delivery of relief aid, opening of border crossings. And you received several calls from the leaders of Arab and Muslim countries within the context of these diplomatic endeavors. You also communicated with the Emir of Qatar. How are these efforts bearing any fruit? Um, the Palestinian issue is the issue of the Islamic world, the first issue of the Islamic world, liberating Jerusalem and liberating Al-Aqsa are the most important issues in the mind of the Muslim world. Our relations with the Muslim countries, Muslim presidents, Muslim foreign ministers, is to cooperate together regarding this very important matter. The Palestinian issue is a necessity. The war, the recent war, this current war, at the beginning we had contacts in order to gap uh, the different uh, views, and today it's undoubtedly it's quite known and quite understood by everyone that we need to have a ceasefire and to stop the blockade and siege against Gaza. Everyone is interested in giving Gaza the uh, humanitarian relief that they need. This is why the cooperation must be there to reach a ceasefire as soon as we can. This can be only done through negotiations and consultations. We all agreed about that, and this must be done very quickly. On the other hand, the United States is one of the parties that are a sort of an obstacle to this ceasefire. Some other European countries as well are uh, an obstacle in this regard. The United Nations General Assembly has announced the voting uh, for an immediate ceasefire. The entire world has uh, voted for that, except certain countries. This means that the world, the peoples in this world, are in bad need to have this ceasefire. They are for this fire. When the U.S. and some European countries oppose the ceasefire, this means that the women and children will be continuously targeted. We have seen people with no sin uh, being killed every hour. This means that the U.S. and some European countries and the Zionist regime 
that commit these crimes, they are, have their hand and there is blood in their hand. These massacres will never be uh, recorded under the name of the Zionist regime, but under the name of everyone who supports the Zionist regime. All countries support the ceasefire, and all countries want to send the humanitarian relief and aid to Palestinians, but the U.S. is against this. Some European countries that signed a joint statement with the United States must be responsible in the eyes of God, in the eyes of the peoples of the world, in the eyes of the history about these crimes. That's why we, in our foreign policy, believe in cooperation with the neighbor countries and with Islamic countries in the region and outside the region to have this unified stand and situation. We have this consensus now. The international world is against the Zionist regime, and we need to continue our talks, our contacts, to follow everything in order for the countries who have similar situations to follow up the matter and to achieve the demands of the Palestinian people, the peoples of the world, and the peoples who went to the street against the American injustice and the Zionist injustice, and the support the Palestinian people are everywhere. This must be achieved quickly. Let me ask you, what are the red lines which, if crossed by Israel, we will then see a different policy adopted by Iran? You must have had red lines concerning what has been happening in Gaza for more than three weeks, Israel's indiscriminate bombardment of innocent civilians in the Strip. The events in Gaza, all these events are red lines. The Zionist regime is crossing all the red lines. Killing more than 3,000 child is not accepted at all under any circumstances. Killing women, attacking hospitals and churches and mosques and uh, all the medical centers is not accepted at all. How many journalists have lost their lives because of the crime of the Zionist regime? I have heard about the uh, uh, journalist, the Palestinian journalist who works for Al Jazeera. This one has seen by himself the killing of his beloved ones, but he is still solid and resilient. And he said that the family lost their lives for the sake of Palestine. Allah is our helper. This is a precious thing. The young boy who was standing over the head of his late brother, the Palestinian children, women, the elderly in Palestine are believers and are ready to lost their lives for the sake of the territories and the land, they are solid and they are resilient. No logic can accept the killing of this number of journalists. This is a red line everywhere in the world. Journalists are doing their job. Journalists are being killed by the Zionist regime so as not to convey the proper message to the entire world. They knock out the communication on the internet so as not the people of the world cannot understand what's going on, but the peoples of the world are now very aware. Protests are against the Zionist regime everywhere. Among people from the Arab and Muslim world, some criticize Iran, others blame Iran, and others attack your policy concerning that you're a regional superpower with an agenda in the region, and the resistance is part of that. If Iran claims to be big brother to this initiative, those who criticize you say Iran has not taken any tangible military action to support the resistance in Gaza. Are there any actions taken but not disclosed, or has the decision been left to the commander in charge for the right moment? Today, the United States provides the Zionist regime with all equipment and weapons, and they asked the resistance movements in the region 
not to do anything. That's why I'm saying the resistance movement is a movement from within the people, from within the ones who want to defend their country. This question must be given to those who criticize Iran. This should be asked to them. The legitimate action of the resistance in Palestine is all right. 3,000 child have been killed, so the question must be given to them. Those who criticize Iran or impose questions on this regard must be asked and must ask themselves why you in Iran defend the peoples who want their freedom and who defend their country and their nation. We have announced so many times that we support the resistance in Palestine and in the regime. The Muslim and independent countries must defend the Palestinian resistance and accept those who are under the control of the U.S. and some other European countries who have played a role in the establishment of the Zionist regime. We need to support the resistance financially and politically. Look at the Palestinian resistance, how resilient they are, how solid they are in the face of the aggression. They are very resilient and they are very strong. And the question is valid for those who pretend, for the countries who pretend and claim they defend the human rights. No one has asked anything from the resistance because the resistance of Palestine have their own decision, can make their own decisions. They are being treated in justice for 75 years. One day, they have worked for the liberation of the country. And let's remember when six Arab countries have met to face the Zionist regime during the Six-Day War. The U.S. has sent several messages to Iran. They say you should not get involved in this war on Gaza, not to expand the battlefield. Do you take these messages as a warning or threatening? What do you say to them? What has been announced by the United States in the uh, messages to the Iranians in order to convey them to the, to the resistance in Palestine, they were announced, no secret. The resistance forces have their own decisions and Iran is not giving the resistance any orders. We tell America, America has no right to give orders to the axis of resistance. These resistance groups and movements are from within the Palestinian society, the Lebanese society, they can distinguish, they can make a decision. And Iran is not taking any decisions or making any decisions on their behalf. The Americans must understand that. We have informed them clearly and openly about that. It's a matter that can cause a sort of confusion. When America says to us and to the axis of resistance, don't adopt any uh, uh, procedures or don't do any step. At the same time, America provides the Zionist regime with equipment and weapons, and they expect the movement, the resistance movement, not to do anything, not to take an action. The Zionist regime is using the American weapons against the women and the children in front of the entire world, and America wants the resistance and the resistance, the acts of resistance, not to do anything or not to launch any operation. This is not acceptable at all. Iran does not make a decision or take a decision in front of any resistance movement. The movement have the right to make the decisions and to take the action. That's why, let me say clearly that the axis of resistance is well supported by Iran. Why they don't help and support the resistance movement who defend legitimately the rights of the country in freedom. We have said that in our foreign policies. We support everyone who defend his land and his nation. The question must be asked to the other people why the Zionist regime in the occupied territories is enjoying the best support of America and the West. 
They are arrogant. They are very arrogant, but the resistance are based on logic and justice and Islamic rules, Islamic ethics, the most important of which is to defend the land, to defend the people, to defend the nation. All the countries in the world must support the resistance. Can anyone say that those who defend themselves must not be supported? This is my question to those parties who don't support the resistance. And why they don't support the resistance? Everyone has to defend his life, his land, and the one who targets the houses of the innocent must be questioned and must be laid. Finally, Israeli Prime Minister Netanyahu made it clear that the ultimate goal of the war on Gaza is to entirely eliminate Hamas and reshape the new Middle East as desired by Israel. Do you think Israel is capable of achieving this goal? Do you have a confrontation plan if this materializes on the ground, especially if you support the axis of resistance in the region? و امریکایی ها به هیچ عنوان نمی توانند جریان مقاومت را از بین ببرند. The Zionist regime has no ability, the US has no ability to put an end to the resistance movement in the region. The resistance is there within the souls of the people. The resistance is there within the souls of the Palestinian people. And the mother who lost her child the child who lost his mother, the father who lost his child, the child who lost his father, they have seen their lives destroyed and they are not ready to give, to let down the resistance. Can anyone put an end to the resistance? The resistance is not one group or one person. The resilience to face the injustice is all over the place and no one can delete this or can put an end to this. This must be always in the, in the mind of the U.S. and uh, the Zionist regime. They have been treating the Palestinians in, for 75 years with complete injustice. They thought they can put an end to the resistance through killing the Palestinians. This will never happen. They will never be able to kill the resistance. We have seen during the last years that the more injustice the Zionist regime is, the more resilient the resistance is. It's stronger than any other time in the past. They are defending the Palestinian people and every movement must defend the people. The world countries give the people who defend their lands the right except the United States of America. It is now isolated from the other world of the countries. The resistance work hard to defend the territories. And we in Iran announced in our foreign policies that we support the resistance. Iran is a strong country. And America knows that Iran, the Muslim country, is better than any other time before, stronger than any other time before. We depend on Allah Almighty, we depend on our beloved people, and we depend on our strength. Despite the threats, there is a possibility, big possibility in Iran, big potential in Iran. They know that our people have the will. Every country, every people who wants independence, they must know that independence will be achieved through facing injustice. America has miscalculated things in Iraq and other parts in the world. The targets of America, America has miscalculated in uh, things in Iraq and in other parts of the world, and they must understand that our strength is not only in our weapon, our strength is, on, is also in our logic. And uh, this is why the peoples of the region love Iran. Our weapons is not the main reason behind our strength. America has a lot of weapons. We have weapons before the revolution, but Iran 
has an option in the region to deal with the peoples of the region because our message is justice and independence. And that's why we support the resistance movement in Palestine and in the region. Mr. President, thank you for talking to Al Jazeera.